Hey everybody, today on Rod or Runs Through, we're previewing a prototype of Inventions Evolution of Ideas. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to the world everybody. It is the Stone Age right now at the beginning of the game, but over the course of six eras, or really kind of like five and a half eras, we are going to, as a species, move forward into the dominant position on our planet. And in this game, we don't do it through acts of conquest or anything like that. We do it by spreading ideas and creating inventions and sharing them with all of mankind. And I'm going to show you how it works today in a solo run-through, which means it's going to be me, the yellow player, up against Hephaestus, the purple player, and Kronos, the orange player. Although I should say, if I were doing a two-player demo today, where it was like be me versus Jen, we would still also be playing against Kronos. Because Kronos, uh, I, I suppose you could add Kronos even to a three-player game if you wanted. I didn't think about that. That is interesting. Ah, right. That's final thought stuff. Let's just talk about the main game. Whether you play solo or two-player, Kronos is in here to replicate a third player because there's so much synergy and positive interaction between players in this game that if you're playing two, you need to have a third player. So what I'm doing playing solo is I'm replicating a three-player game. Me versus Hephaestus versus Kronos. In the same way a two-player game replicates a three-player game. So, anyway, I've already done all the setup, and there's a lot of setup. Randomized... Um, uh, oh, what do you call them? Wealth tiles all over the place. Uh, uh, different bonuses you can get from sages all over the place. Uh, players get randomly selected milestones. All kinds of things. But I've already done that. During setup, there is one choice players have to make, though. Where do they want to introduce their first idea into the world? We've got these seven different locations. North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Central Asia, East Asia, and Oceania. And all three of us, um, Kronos, Hephaestus, and me, have chosen where we are starting out. They um, have an automated way they do it. So they've introduced, Kronos has introduced silk, uh, the idea of silk. We don't have silk yet. This has not been invented. But the idea of silk is starting to spread in Africa. And the idea of plumbing is starting to spread in Oceania. And um, for me, I have introduced tanned leather to Europe. We haven't invented it yet, but it's something that's on the rise. And um, the reason I chose this is because, well, to do it, because this tile was placed here randomly, it said I had to send two of my citizens to Europe to actually introduce the idea to Europe. And my benefit for doing this was I got to introduce another citizen onto the map. Which I did. That's why, if you're noticing, hey, each of my opponents only have one citizen out in the world, while I've got two. Now, they would have gotten different benefits for what they chose, but they never, I mean, they keep it as simple as possible. They don't actually do these bonus actions. Um, but I did get to do my bonus action, which is why uh, there is an area majority element of this game, and I've got more area, uh, or my ideas, I should say, my citizens have more I, um, dominance in the world than my opponents. So, I chose that to be my starting and I am now ready to go. Although, uh, here's the turn order track. The first player to go is, unless turn order changes, is going to be Kronos, the orange player. And now Kronos, remember, uh, is used in either the solo or the two-player game, is just a super simple, um, quickly look at the board and do a thing. It's summarized right up here what Kronos is going to do, but I should say Kronos is starting out here in Africa, right? This is a worker placement game. Kronos is never going to place any workers. Instead, they, on their turn, as it says right up there, they move to the next region. They're here in Africa. The next region is Central Asia. And over here, if they can, they will uh, introduce a new idea into the world. If they can't do that, because there's already an idea here, they'll try to invent it. Uh, if there's already an invention here, an idea that's become an invention, instead, they'll try to share it with the world. And if they can't do that, they will at least innovate on it to make it better. And if they can't do any of those four things for whatever reason, they'll just move to the next zone and they'll just keep traveling, keep migrating until they do it. So they're coming here. They're introducing a new idea. Now me, as a player, I've got two ideas in the queue. Immigration and coinage waiting to be added. They just always draw from the supply. The rightmost tile, they're going to come here. They've introduced lighthouses. And they. Um, this token says, hey, they need to spend one of their people to do it. So they do. And they would get this bonus, but again, the uh, AIs don't care about these bonuses because it's just try to keep simple. So that's it. That's it for Kronos. Kronos always just moves and does a very simple thing. Boom, boom, boom. Easy peasy. So now we're on to me. 
And here's where things get complicated, folks, because this is a Vita Lasarda game. And while it looks deceptively simple, there are wheels within wheels within wheels. So, <clears throat> what do I want to do? I've got 10 different actions I can choose from. They are invent an idea, like what Kronos just did. Uh, uh, you know, or I'm sorry, you know, introduce an idea to the world, or invent an existing idea, or innovate on an existing invention, or share an existing invention to the world. These are the four main actions that we do throughout the game. But there's other stuff as well. We can recall our citizens from the main map back to our own society board. We can um, exert influence out on the map. That's where the area majority stuff comes in. We can move our people around on the map. We can make new major milestones in human advancement. We can engage in diplomacy with our fellow players, and we can call our diplomats home. In the same way we can call our travelers home, we can call our diplomats home. So I'm going to do one of these five actions. And the first action is going to be done with um, one of my three workers. I've got these uh, this epoch pillar and then these other pillars. My first one has to be done with this. And honestly... At the beginning of the game, it's a very, very good idea to introduce an idea to the world, like exactly what Kronos did. The more ideas you introduce, that means you are kind of setting the tone for the game and uh, other people can build on what you've done or you can build on yourself, but you are guaranteed to get some very, very good bonuses. Um, and points, 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 points. This is one of the main ways to get points, is to introduce ideas into the world. So I could do this, and I'm, I want to introduce an idea. And the nice thing is, once I say, hey, this is what I'm doing, on every one of these 10 actions, there's a very nice little boom, do this, then this, then this. You know, the three steps. I put a card on the table, like you saw Kronos do. I mark it with my people, like you saw Kronos do. And I get the bonus, which Kronos did not do. And then I draw a new card. Easy peasy. Here's the problem. Um, oh, actually... Let me rewind a little bit, because I am skipping a step. Step two of my turn is place one of my pillars out on the world and do the action. Uh, here is another player's board. Let me zoom in really close so you can see. This is what everybody sees as a reminder of what they do on their turns. The first thing you do is you prepare your chain tokens. Then you place a worker. Then, if during all the stuff you did on your turn, you made any aspirations, you turn those aspirations into progress. And um, then, optionally, at the end of your turn, you can pay through the nose. It is very expensive to implement those progress tiles and add them to your society to get all kinds of bonuses. So those are what I do. The first thing I do on my turn is... I get my chain bonus queued up. Because at the beginning of the game, I am at level one influence, I get one chain bonus. If I get more influential, then I get two chain bonuses, or even th all three chain bonuses. And what do these chain tokens do? They let me do bonus actions. And um, if I don't use this chain token that I've got queued up, I will lose it. These are always use or lose. If I'm super influential, I want to find a way that I can do a main action and three chained actions off of it. Uh, and that's a big part of the overall strategy for the game. And here's the problem. Like I said, I just want to come over here and introduce an idea to the world, right? That'll be great. But the problem is, this is one of the actions that does not chain. You see this pink, 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 this little picture of chains? If I innovate, if I recall my people, if I exert influence, or if I move, if I do any of these four actions, then I can start a chain and do bonus stuff. So if I don't do one of these four actions, I'm not using my chains and I'm wasting them. I'm throwing them away. But here's the deal. If I'm smart, I can introduce one of these other actions and then via my chain token, I can do what I really want to do, which is introduce an idea because that's more powerful. So how am I going to do that? Well, uh, everybody starts with um, oh, hold on, with an influence on the board. And I just realized I set myself up wrong. This is a level two influence token. This is my level one influence token, right? So if I could get my level two influence token on the board then I would be able to introduce an idea by chaining to it. There's the picture of chain saying introduce an idea. But that means I've got to exert influence and get that on the board and then chain it. And now here's the problem. Um, I do have enough people. I, you need two people on the board to introduce a level two uh, influence token, which means I could then chain and do what I want to do. But I already have an influence token here, and I cannot put a second one. So I've got to get two people over in another region. You can see I can walk to different areas. And then from there, I could introduce 
influence into that region. And then I could chain and activate that and do what I really want to do, which is an idea. So that's one way I could do it. But that would require, so that would require movement. And that's what this action is over here. Oh, and actually looking at even better. Oh my gosh, yes. I know what my first action is going to be. I am not going to introduce an idea, which is kind of what I was thinking I wanted to do. Instead, I am going to move. And again, if we look down here, a few things happen. First of all, when I move uh, my people from one region to another, that means I'm going to be introduced to new cultures, which means I get a cultural um, aspiration tile, which means everybody has these four tokens. And if it's like this on my board, it represents culture. If it's like this, it represents technology and trade. And if it's like this, it, no, no, it represents economy. And this represents technology. This is saying, Hey, take some, uh, get some aspirations for culture. So I take this and I put it on my board in my first progress step. So at the end of my turn, I'm going to resolve this and turn this into uh, from an aspiration into an actual progress tile. But that'll be a little bit later. Next, I pick one of my people out in the world and I move them to an adjacent zone, which is the next thing I am going to do. So where am I? Here's my two people. And so I can move any of them uh, over here to North America, over here to East Asia, or over here to Central Asia. And I'm liking Central Asia. So I'm going to move one of my people over here. Great. And now I get to do a chain action because if you look over here, it says a third thing. If you've got any chain tokens, and I do, I have my one, I can actually spend this chain token to visit the scholar of the region I just moved to. So uh, that means I'm going to spend this chain to visit this scholar. Now, I collect this scholar token, and what that means is at the end of the era, I am going, or I'm sorry, no, these are sages, but I'm going to get more knowledge, which leads to more scholars in my society. That is very, very useful. I just put this scholar over here, and I'll resolve him later. But in the meantime, I spent my chain to talk to the scholar, and now I get to do this chained action. And what is it? introduce an idea to the world, which is what I wanted to do anyway. So basically, I could have just come here and introduced an idea. But instead, I came here and got an aspiration tile along the way. Plus, later on, I'll get another scholar, and then I'll end up doing what I want to do. This is the crux of the game. Finding ways to chain your actions together. Knowing what you want to do, but then not just coming right out and doing it, but finding a way to chain yourself to it uh, via one or two or even three chain actions. That's the secret sauce of this game. So, anyway, so I am now, because I say to everybody, hey, I'm doing a chain action, it's introduction. That means I do all of these steps now. And so if we take a look at the board again, the first thing I'm doing when I'm introducing an idea to the world is I play one of my cards to the board, like you saw Kronos do. Then I claim it with my people and get a bonus, and then I draw a new card, right? So which one of these am I going to introduce? I have got, uh, randomly as part of setup, irrigation and coinage. A level 2 technology and a level 3 technology. Oh, and uh, I'm sorry, speaking of technologies, I forgot. These should have slid over after Kronos put one out and a new one should have come out. So, what was it? Writing got revealed. So these are available for the future. This will come into play at the end of the turn. Uh, folks, always watch the Klingon subtitles because there's a lot going on in this game. I'm sure I'm going to forget a few little things here and there and Paula will point out when I forget stuff. So anyway, I'm going to introduce one of these ideas to the world. Coins is a more advanced idea which requires an additional citizen get exhausted to do it. You notice there's no exhaustion symbol over here. Uh, irrigation is easier than coins. Plus, I have another problem too. Uh, introducing coinage, which is implicitly more valuable, um, requires knowledge of copper smelting. I do not have knowledge of copper smelting. I have knowledge of agriculture. My opponent knows about copper smelting. And if I want to know about that, I have to send out a diplomat from my society to visit my opponent and get the benefit of their knowledge. So, uh, it is, I mean, I could introduce the idea of this, but I couldn't actually invent it, i.e. flip it and make it an active thing until I know copper smelting. So this one would actually help my opponents more than me. Uh, the purple player would be very happy if I'd introduced that idea because then they could go and invent it because they're smarter than me about copper smelting, which is one of the reasons I'm going to say, nope, 
we're going to do immigration or you know irrigation because I know agriculture and because of my knowledge of agriculture I can invent this irrigation easy peasy lemon squeezy. So this is what I'm doing and now I've got to decide where am I going to put it. I could put it here in South America, in North America, or in um, East Asia, right? Because every other um, region of the world has an existing idea. And here's the thing. Wherever I put this, I'm going to have to send my three, some of my three remaining people out to the world to spread this idea. And when I do it, I will get access to one of three actions. Three points if I send it to South America, and that will cost me two of my remaining citizens. The opportunity to introduce another idea into the world, and that will be if I send only one citizen out, or the opportunity to get another scholar. Wow! Oh my gosh, I didn't even think this far. I like this. Is this going to work? If I do that, then I could do... Yes! Whoa! I'm going to make a big turn. I am introducing the idea of irrigation to Eastern Asia. And it, this requires that I send one of my people out. Specifically, this is a brown invention. There are three colors. Brown, blue, and white, uh, which represents uh, trade, uh, artisanal stuff, and oh, um, economic stuff, if I recall correctly. I, I forget. There's thematic names for everything, but there's so much going on in this game that I tend to forget, and I just think of them as brown, white, and blue. Anyway, so to, to introduce a brown idea into the world, I need to send one tradesman to Eastern Asia. It just so happens I have one tradesman, so boom. I'm going to put them there, and because I put this here, my reward is I get the immediate... I get to do uh, this action. And this action is introduce another idea to the world. So um, I'm going to have to stop my little uh, steps that I'm doing here and uh, do this action, which is starting this process again. It just so happens I have one more idea. Players always have two ideas on hand at the beginning of their turn. So I'm going to introduce this somewhere to the world. I could put it down here in South America and get myself three points, or I could put it over here in North America and get myself a scholar. I, at this point, I think I value getting more citizens. Super powerful scholars. I mean, three points is great. I mean, this is a game where you're going to score in the... Uh, you know, you know, just, I mean, in my experience anyway, getting up close to 100 points is pretty good. Um, so three points isn't nothing. But I'm going to install this as a bonus action off of this here. And I need to send two... Um, oh, what do you call it? Two... No. Ooh. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. I got it wrong. Brown are the thinkers. Brown is technology. Brown people are thinkers. Uh, the bluish green is economic stuff like coinage, and that's sending a trader out. So I have to send two traders to invent coins. I have one trader left, and I have a scholar. I have one scholar. Scholars are wild. They can stand in for anything. So I'm going to have this scholar go as my second trader, and therefore I have now successfully introduced coinage into North America. And what's my benefit for that? Recruit another scholar. So now I've got another wild character. Phew! Okay. So at the end of this bonus action I did, I draw a card. So I can take any of these four. And then at the end of my first action, or my first free action, I'm going to have to take. So I'm going to get two more ideas and queue them up for later. So I've got writing, glass, uh, musical, uh, notation, and steel. And now right now in this early game, I don't necessarily have anything that's pushing me towards any of these. One thing, I look at all of them, and they say, well, they need certain uh, milestones to have been hit to do this. All three of these, origin of language, origin of language, and what's this one? Uh, is it, oh, control of fire. These three all have knowledge that everybody shares. This one requires knowledge of iron. Nobody, because humanity has not had a breakthrough to develop the milestone of iron yet. If I could get iron, uh, something that I know about and nobody else knows about, and then I've got this, then that means those will combo well together. So I'm going to take steel, and then they slide over and a new one comes out. And now I get another one because I literally introduced two ideas in one action. Plus I moved around. So I basically did three turns worth of action on my very first turn of the game by using my chain token well. So what else do I get? All right, so this one requires mathematics. It is the Mariner's Compass. 
And uh, which one do I want? Now, another thing to look at them, this requires mathematics, which is another thing. If I could get that milestone, I could control this too. But milestones are a, a big, heavy thing to do. Um, and you don't get to chain off of a milestone action. So I don't know if I want a second one. So how about I go for one? I, I took a hard one to do. Let's take an easy one to do. Hmm... So, if that's the case, I'm going to go for one of these three. What is another way I can choose between writing, glass, and musical notation? Well, one thing is, the more inventions I make of a certain type, like say, of the brown, the white, or the blue, as part of setup, I already have two inventions that, have, are, that, are, uh, that I introduced to the world. The domestication of dogs, which is a white cultural breakthrough, and trader, which is a blue economic breakthrough. There, yeah, all things being equal, you're kind of incentivized to get more of the same type of color. And I just took a brown one. So how about I grab another brown one and maybe I'm going to try and push a, um, a, a technology agenda because the more brown invention or ideas that turn into inventions that I can claim at the end of the day... A hug makes it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper for me to make technology-based progress. So you really there's a kind of a set collection element too. Now you might not want to do this. You might have different uh, goals because I forgot to mention, folks. As part of setup, everybody has three secret goals that they're trying to go for as well that are worth variable amounts of points. For me, I need to get upwards of I can get upwards of ten points if I can exert influence in region two, four, six, and seven. I can get up to six points if I've got people in regions 5, 6, 7, and 1 in a chain by the end of the game. And I can get 10 points if I have made 10 inventions. And so my... I mean, everybody gets one based on inventions, one based on people on the board, and one based on exerting influence. But, um, so this one could have been a thing that says, hey, do a lot of variety, or just get a lot of one color or whatever. I've just got one that says, do lots of inventions. If I make 8 inventions before the game is over, then I'll score 10 points. Great. Uh, so, but that might have been a thing that was pushing me towards a different color as well. But right now, because um, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to keep on trying to push brown. I've already got a discount on making white and blue, uh, uh, what are these called? Progress. I'm going to try and double down and get a lot of brown um, because, well, they, I mean, they're all powerful in different ways. And we'll talk about what they do later once I start earning some of them. So anyway... I'm sorry, folks. I know that was a lot, but this game is a lot. That was my first turn, wherein I did three turns worth of actions, and I'm sure Vita Lasarda would be proud. Okay, so at the end of my turn, I get my little chain marker back. I use a good... Oh, and by the way, I should have mentioned, when I activated this, this got flipped over. That um, chain bonus is not available to anybody... At least not for a while. Eventually, uh, kind of Concordia style, these have the opportunity to flip back over and come back into the world. When sages, when a sage returns here, he'll say, hey, I'm back. I'm ready to share this uh, bonus again. But that won't be for a little bit. Okay, that was my first turn. Now it is Hephaestus's first turn. And Hephaestus is, a, for all intents and purposes, a player who does all of these actions. Oops including actually putting worker placement uh, tokens out and uh, potentially blocking, um, you know, and doing all that kind of worker placement stuff. Kronos does and Hephaestus does. So how does Hephaestus do things? Well, they've got a deck of cards. And so my first card says, hey, they might, depending on when I do it, introduce an idea, or they might exert influence. If they exert influence, they'll try to chain off of that. If they try to invent something, they won't chain. If they try to share, they won't chain. If they try to send out diplomats, they won't chain. So which of these actions are they going to do? Well, it's their first action, and it is you will note it says, hey, do the top one there, right? That's uh, pretty straightforward if we zoom in. So they are going to, just like me, try to introduce an idea. And if they couldn't introduce an idea, then they'd move down and try to do the next thing, which is exert influence, whereupon they would actually trigger a chain action. So they're not going to chain right now because there is still one, um, one region of the world that has no ideas. So they... 
um, are going to... Oh, whoops, I should have said, by the way. They started out with their little marker. The same way uh, Kronos had a marker, they have their own marker on the board. And unfortunately, my prototype... Did I mention everything you're seeing today as prototype, folks? Was missing a few pieces, including the special Hephaestus marker, apparently. the rule. My rules say that they're supposed to have a meeple. And since they didn't have one, I'm using one of my wife's little googlies. These are cute little glass uh, game upgrades that you can get from her website. Uh, gamerglass.art, a uh, always over there, uh, right over my shoulder in every video, folks. Um, you know, I'm actually having to use one for tracking what era it is, and I'm having to use one to track Hephaestus location because my prototype was missing some pieces. So anyway, they're over here in Region Three where they started out, and they just go to Region Four, Five, Six, Seven, One, Two until they find a place they can introduce an idea. They're gonna travel all the way over here because this is the last place they can introduce an idea. Oops, by the way, new one should have slid out. And um, so that's where they're traveling to do it, but they will actually mark that they're going to do it. So they take their pillar and come right here. Remember, I could have done this as well, but then I wouldn't have had any chain actions. They're coming here and doing the same thing. And it says they will not chain. So they're going to go through the same process. So just like um, Kronos, they just take the rightmost one and they put it over here and they have infinite people. You can see, I do not have infinite citizens on my board. I'm almost completely dried up, but they've got infinite citizens. So they're going to put these two over here. If they were a human player, they'd get three points, but the AI players never get the benefit of these um, uh, idea tokens. But don't feel bad for them. They get lots of benefits. So anyway, sliding on over. And hey, everybody, we finished the first round of the game. Now, this game goes for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The first of 13 rounds of gameplay. Um, and at the end of certain rounds of gameplay, we move forward, or at the end of every round, we move forward. And sometimes that means we switch eras, which is what we're about to do. Because we are about to move from... Oops, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? There we are, there we are. We are about to move from the Stone Age to the Neolithic Age. And then from the Neolithic Age, we'll move on to the Antiquities, Classical Age. Or no, no, we move to the Middle Age, then Antiquities and Classics, then um, the Modern Age and the Computer Age, if I recall correctly. Anyway, though, so we're going to move forward, which means we're going to do more actions. But before then, because we're switching ages, we move the little marker up here. And by the way, once again, I'm having to use my wife's uh, cute little glass googlies to do this. And a few things happen. First of all, good old Kronos gets to exert some influence out in the world. It's as if Kronos came over to this action, had an area majority, and put one of theirs on the board, but they just get to do it for free. And what they do is, when they're doing this, they look ahead to where they are. They're in zone two right now. They look to say, hey, in the next zone where I'm going, could I do this? Yes, they can. So they're going to put this right here and move over there and uh, get five points. Now, Kronos and Hephaestus, they're working against me. They share their points. So they've just got one, and you know, they combine their points at the end of the game. So anyway, so they just got five. That's one of the reasons you exert influence is to get points. And there's only one chance for me to exert influence over here now in Oceania. But I don't think I care to because, well, one, there's only three points left. And I don't care anyway because I want to get into regions two, four, six, and seven. I wouldn't be bothering to come over there anyway. So I am not too bothered by that particular breakthrough. And now a few more things are going to happen. They're listed right here. First of all, if anybody had taken a move that would let them rearrange turn order, we would do that now. Nobody did, so turn order is going to stay the same. And then we adjust our influence, which is to say, if I had on my turn spent some influence, let me go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit, you'll notice that, hey, at the end of an era, I get, if I'm down here, I get to move back up one. And on the flip side, if I've got a lot of influence over time, at the end of every era, it drops a little bit. Now, I didn't go up or down, so I'm not going to get any free. But you know, later on, it's if you've got a lot of influence, you're getting a three chain actions, it's kind of hard to hold on to it because your influence wanes over time if you don't keep investing in it. Kind of like real life. Uh, okay, anyway, though, that's going to be it for this first era shift. So then we came up here and we come down here and we are moving on to round two. Now, when we get to um, switching from the uh, Neolithic age to the Metal age, 
Well, there's going to be a lot of things that happen. Uh, you know, the Stone Age, the first round of the game is just really kind of whetting your appetite. Uh, yeah, but and then things really get going, and we start worrying about uh, players blocking each other and all kinds of stuff when we move into the Second Age. Which, folks, is what I'm about to do right now. If you want to hit that I up in the top right corner of the screen or follow the links down in the show notes to go to the extended gameplay. And if you do, you'll get to watch me take a few more turns and play through the entire second age and show you a bunch more stuff. We have just barely scratched. I haven't shown you how player blocking works yet. Oh, and you'll also get to see me use that aspiration tile that I totally forgot about, which I'm sure Paulo mentioned in the show notes at the end of my turn. I forgot to turn my aspiration into progress. I'll do that in the extended as well. So anyway, folks, uh, hit that I, follow the links in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.